Oh, hey guys, how we doing today? Some of you uh, might know where we are. We're back in Poland. And uh, we're in Krakow, actually. In Stare Pagusia. And we're going for a walk on my old street of Rykovka. I want to check out my favorite church. And then we're going to do a little walk. Check out Fort Benedict. And who knows, maybe we'll be inspired and go up to the Krakus now. I don't know. It's still early in the morning. Beautiful day. Beautiful day. We haven't even gotten more than 10 steps, and right now we're in front of uh, a building uh, that was part of the Jewish ghetto um, that actually was a contagious disease hospital um, in 1940. And... Um, I always am brought back when I'm here about uh, that aspect of things. And some of you have heard the story, but, uh, but when I had taken my job here in Krakow, I actually was trying to avoid living in the ghetto, in the former Jewish ghetto, because I, I was uncomfortable with that idea. And lo and behold, <laughs> the apartment I ended up getting is right smack in it. These, uh, this woods right here, this park, if you take the trails up, it uh, goes up to the same view from Schindler's List when they looked out. Although technically it wasn't the same hill, but the idea. Here's my old place. trails the nice thing about the summer months at least the end of June when I'm filming this the last weekend in June is I will say this there aren't as many people here with all the college students the university students gone schools out of session um, I won't say it's a ghost town but it's quiet in the shadow of St. Joseph Church, you have this nice building right here. I don't know if you can make out the glass. But I always liked walking by this building on my way to school. I mean, she is a beauty, this cathedral. I'll show you the front of it and we'll go in. It's kind of uh, interesting. So, like, there's a sign. I swear I saw, like, they don't want you going in there if you're wearing shorts, okay? Beautiful little cafes here in this uh, center market. Well, not in the market, in this, uh, in this area. But uh, here's a better view of the church. And I will say this, if you do like an Instagram check, there are so many photos that are taken in front of this church where people are getting their selfies on and you have this park I call it a park but it's the hangout spot right here in town this part of Stare Pagusia which right across the street you have some restaurants and then it's a, like a three minute walk you take the bridge and then you're in all the good stuff that Krakow has to offer it's funny uh, so you have all these beautiful flowers right now but they have given up cutting the grass yeah, not so sure about that one. But one thing that happens that I'll show you real quick and then we'll go into the side of the church is this area at Christmas time, there's a beautiful two Christmas trees that they put out right in front, right, on, right out onto the street. And then they host a Christmas market right here in this spot. And... I have to say, I regret that I didn't get a chance to go to this Christmas market when I was here because I was off gallivanting in the eastern part of Poland. Maybe someday I'll get to see it. But it's, on, it's only like on one weekend where the regular Christmas market, well, not the regular, but like the other Christmas markets sometimes are held for, for weeks at a time. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look. I was in here yesterday.
So let me show you something that I like. What I like about this church is on the side, they have these little side chapels. See, we were in and out. I didn't want to interrupt because literally these two ladies were busy cleaning, getting things ready for the wedding. It made me smile though, because I felt like every weekend there were multiple wedding ceremonies in that church. So it's, it's nice to be like, oh, okay, cool. Now, a few steps <laughs> away from the church. If you walk up, you can start heading towards Fort Benedict, there's a beautiful park, and the Krakus Mound. And depending on how long you're here for, usually I think this is something that most people like to check out on their journeys. Sun's beating down today, guys. Jeez. Look at that house. Isn't it cool? So, one thing I was going to mention, I was mentioning it, and then I kind of stopped mid-sentence. And now I'm gonna stop mid-sentence again because what is this? Is this a warthog? Is it dra oh it's a dragon. Look guys, isn't he cutie? Alright. That's cute. The dragon stands guard right here at the gates. It goes into the park that they had been remodeling, but now is ready to go. But we're going to keep going because we're cool like that. But what I was going to say is, for my fellow tourists who come here, typically with the bigger churches, especially the cathedrals and the basilicas, you really shouldn't be wearing shorts when you go in there. If you have a hat, it should be taken off. Uh, I think they let things slide when it's warmer, but really, if you're going to follow the traditions and their rules, you shouldn't be doing that. And yes, I'm wearing shorts, so I'm hypocritical, but just stating what the rule is. So either the um, electric mowers are broken or Krakow is embracing more of this return to the natural state. Another section, another park where I used to see people kind of just hang out at, and now it's uh, a little overgrown just a bit maybe this is a way of recruiting like different types of animals to come back for my uh, fellow youtubers who watch this uh, here's a little note don't delete your channel because then you have to come back to places and reshoot stuff that you already filmed just speaking from experience so uh, <laughs> here we are We've made it to, uh, as I say, the dog park, or as we can say, the uncut grass area, with some really cool spots actually in this location. And this is on the back side of where I was spending the night, and actually where my apartment was before. So, my first weekend here, I actually found this. And it's kind of funny because I was watching uh, two YouTube vloggers who, in their journeys in Krakow, and they're like, oh, we, we found this place. We discovered this place. It was really tricky to get to. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. Because what they found, one, was not tricky. And two, if you actually just leave the old town part of town and, like, walk across the street... You can pretty much figure things out on your own. Anyway, they made it seem like it was top secret because they came up from this way, which happens to be next to the apartments. So we'll get into what they found momentarily, but right here is a cute little chapel. I've never been inside of it because it's always locked. Always locked. 
Well, I'm sure it's not always locked. It's just it's locked when I'm here. Now we'll cut away from that. I actually was going to show you something, but there was a guy with his dog just kind of chilling. And uh, I realized I was being a little bit louder than I should have been. You know, try to be polite. But, uh, you know what? I think I know why they, they're not mowing this. They are sick of the sunbathers. That's what it is. That's what it is. Now, if you remember my old channel, I filmed a vlog of Fort Benedict, which at the time you could see through this wall because it was winter and it was bloody cold. So if you cut this way, which is the way we're going, you go to the left. This is where we're going to find our secret passage to look at Fort Benedict, which I hear they're actually renovating finally. Uh, fort Benedict was a... Um, well, it was a fort. I think used mainly in the 1800s. Here, we'll go this way. If you go that way, you go hang out with the gypsies, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the last time, so Fort Benedict, these trees used to not be here. If you actually go online and look at old photographs of this fort, um, this was completely looked out onto the valley. And now, because God forbid you guys get a good view, they appear to be doing some renovations to it. <laughs> wow. You're welcome. Only the best. Only the best here with my vlogs. Let me tell you. Um, crap. Should have gone in the other way. So, anyway, imagine that this is not here, this tarp, and it's just a giant brick fortress. Uh, where they had some guns on it and stuff like that. And after World War II, it actually was used as a um, as an apartment building. Which is kind of weird to think of, too, because you we just walked across the field, but it was. It was apartments. Way. We'll go this way now. The gypsy path, as I call it. Because the first time I ever walked this way. Oh, crap. More people. Well, at least we're not alone. I'll tell you the story in a second. So, where those people were coming up, this is where I got stopped by a guy and a, a woman. And uh, they asked me if I spoke... English. <laughs> of course I do. Wow, there's more people here. You know, I've determined that this is just not a good spot. It's like three people over there that are drinking. You see trash on the ground. I was going to wait to another vlog about Krakow to talk about this, but I guess now it's time. And who cares about my gypsy story, how they were hitting me up for money, and I was like, really? This is what my experience is going to be here. But what I was going to say is, when I went running this morning and yesterday morning, um, I don't remember. To, I don't remember seeing a lot of people on the benches sleeping, and they closed my cemetery. What? All right. Well, we can't get in, but it is a cool cemetery. A lot of famous people from this part of town and it's closed if I'm reading this right the construction started on September 28, 2023 so last fall and it's not going to be done until this end of November awesome well that was a waste wow we are batting like not very good right now so Oh yeah, so back to my story. So this morning, when I was out for my run, uh, so first of all, to give you a landmark before I talk about this morning, uh, here's the train stop for Krakow, the Pagusia one. So you're pretty close to that if you're in this section of town. 
But anyway, um, so this morning I was out, and I wasn't running in the center. I, I actually ran around the river. And uh, there were a couple people with gear who were camping out. And it wasn't um, the party goers or the drunks. So that was new. And I'd say it was new, but it wasn't that new because the morning before, when I went running, uh, I was over at uh, their big park. So I was at a, I was doing sets over at this park and there's a bathroom there that I know that you can pay like 50 cents and use. So I went to use the uh, facility and when the door clicked and I opened it, a guy lifted up his head. There were two people sleeping inside the bathroom. So needless to say, I didn't get to use it. But it threw me off because the last time that I lived in the... So like I moved away a year ago exactly from today. And I don't remember seeing all that before. So just an interesting thing. I was talking to a friend about it and they said that they have people that are camping out in their near where they live too. So yeah. So with two failures this morning, this third one I know we will be okay because I can see it directly from here. We are walking to the Krakus Mount. And thankfully, it's a pretty clear day. <laughs> the last time I tried to film this place, it was uh, it was a bit um, a bit foggy. So we just we just came from that spot behind the trees over there is where Fort Benedict is and the cemetery. But I wanted just to bring your attention to the mural on the side of the road, and it gives you the history of modern-day Poland. When you come down off the ramp, all you have to do is you just hang an immediate left and take this little dirt trail right here. And this will take you to the Promised Land. Krakas Mound, which I don't know the whole story about Krakas Mound. I can tell you about the Tartar Mound over in Permissal. <laughs> but, uh, Anywho, there's three mounds here in town. Uh, the Wanda Mound is over near the river. And that one's very small, but it's cool. And talks about King Krakus' daughter, Wanda. Go figure. But of course, there's different stories for her. And whether she drowned herself by the river, so she didn't have to marry like a tribal chief rival tribe or she was wounded when she led her men I forget the story anyway we're going up you know let me share a little side story right here now these people are out of the way this couple right here I really have noticed people are really lazy so I was coming up on this side right here, okay? On this far side. And they were walking from right here. And you know what they did? They just cut as close as possible, right in front of me. They could have gone forward and then gone to the side, but no, they actually <laughs> walked right into me. Like what the heck? I rant about many things. People that watch this channel, you know that. So if you're five, I just recommend taking the steps. If you're a little bit older and don't want to roll your ankles, take the path. You will most likely encounter people. If you're in a Dungeons and Dragons, we call them like random encounters. Just roll the dice. It'll just depend on whether you're 
meeting up with some college students, some drunk older men, or some lovebirds. I think those are your three options. The higher up you go, the more of different parts of the city that you see. The old school, I call them the communist block apartments. They're directly in front of us. Well, now they're blocked, but they're directly in front of us. Over yonder. Now on a clear day, from this mound, and actually I'm wrong, there's four, there's four mounds, four mounds, because I just realized there's Wanda, there's Krakus, there's the cool one where they do like Renaissance stuff next to Buandia Park, I'm sure I mispronounced that, and then there's the one that they made to one of their leaders uh, as well, like one of their like 20th century leaders. So we're not quite up at the top yet, but just want to give you a different vantage point of where we are. So that steeple directly in front of us, that's St. Joseph's. Um, Wavel Castle's behind it in the background. And I think St. Mary's is right over there. I, I want to say it's St. Mary's, could be wrong. <laughs> and we're gonna do those final steps trekking up this mound. There's actually some pretty cool photos from like the early 1900s and how this kind of like towered because there were no trees, how this kind of just like stood out uh, even in like the lower parts of the community. And while I'm sure you want to hike up there, which we will, momentarily I want to show you something else a couple other landmarks in this spot I'm glad I'm not allergic to grass they haven't mowed up here either I can feel it just like giving me a, a massage <laughs> so if I remember right I don't know if you can see it okay but down there in this ravine is where they shot some of Schindler's List We'll try to get a better vantage point, but you see that rusted building down there? Here you go. Here's a better view. I believe this was a set down there. I don't know. I could be wrong. I do know on the other side of the rocks and those trees is where uh, one of the concentration camps was. So when they would line them up and have them leave uh, from... I'll show you the point, if not today, in another video, but they would take them across this way and over there to, uh, to the German concentration camp. And again, the mountain's right behind us. But what I wanted to show you is, is if you go down this trail right over here, you actually end up getting, uh, you end up abutting to a cemetery. One that I'm sure is open, but we tried that already. I don't usually hunt two cemeteries in a day, but there's one right over there. You can feel it. It's really humid today. It's probably right now it's already, it's close to 30 already, but it's humid. And I ran a half marathon this morning for fun. <laughs> and I'm feeling it right now. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is, you know, very uh, handicap friendly right here. I don't know, if you, you can see that radio tower right in the distance and then behind it, way, way in the distance, there's a, uh, I think it's a monastery. That's where I ran to this morning. But here's your view, guys. And look at this, little Simpson action right in front of us. And boom, you're at the top. 
So here you go. Here's your views. But uh, yeah, so this is why people do this as their physical activity thing while they're here. And here is your view of Krakow from the top of Krakus Mount. We are making our way down now from the Krakus Mount. I decided that, uh, you know, it wouldn't be right to not show you um, what I think are two really important spots that are connected to our walk from today. Oof. I said it's it's wicked hot. I, I if I have a preference as to when I'm walking around in Poland, I prefer it when it's colder, crappier weather, rain, snow, freezing temperatures. <laughs> this is not this is not fun. See, some people come to crack on, they don't even realize. Nature's right across the street. But again, these trees are all relatively young. They weren't here 100 years ago. I'm happy they are, though. Got onto the streets and, uh, Many of you who've been to Krakow before will recognize where we are. Oh, I thought that was romper. A lot more uh, beverages are on the ground too here now. So we're walking by Joseph Milk. This place is known for their uh, sweets, their danishes, their desserts. I remember when I was moving here, I found their website and I was like, ooh, that looks really good. Problem is, I have such a sweet tooth that if I go in there, I'm going to spend so much more money. But just check it out and let me know what you think. What we're going to do, we're going to cross the street. Lucky us. So we're gonna go to the right. One thing I noticed in my um, on my tours back in February, and a lot of viewers have commented, it's about all the construction. And you'll note the Krakow is uh, also in the middle of construction, which is interesting, I guess, and a distraction and whatever else you want to call it. But uh, in this section of town, if you I wouldn't say follow the signs, but you follow the groups of tourists and you can easily find yourself to, to Schindler's Museum, if you'd like. I think these group of people are probably going to where I want to show you. We'll see. You can see like the person in the, in the middle who's leading the way. This is a place I've always wanted to go to, but never had a chance. But the reason why we're going down this side street right here is this is the only remaining part of the Jewish ghetto from the war. Right here, this wall. This is it. This is all that remains. And so from 1941, to 1943 this is the fragment to kind of recognize where the wall was and where we just came from was the actual ghetto itself and this was this was the fragment and then they would be released if I remember right and then they'd walk to the right over there towards Schindler's Museum which is less than a mile away so let me try to show you a different vantage point of it A few times ago when I was here, it was kind of frustrating because now the lighting's not really, the lighting is betraying us today. <laughs> um, so it's right here, as I said. 
but it was interesting because I saw some uh, younger women, college age, who were taking selfies. They were like posing and smiling and making hand gestures right in front of the wall, which is just not right. Just as we walked by, I was right. So lady now took them from wherever she was talking and now she's explaining to them about that, fra that fragment. <laughs> Yeah, so when you're here, you can get tour guides. You can also pay for those, like, tours where you're sitting in, like, the back of a go-kart, as I call it. And uh, they'll drive you throughout the whole city, different landmarks. Or if you just read a little bit, you can figure it all out for yourself. So not far from that part that we just came from, and this is all within reasonable walking range the Krakow Mall uh, sorry the Krakow Mound the mall <laughs> King Krakus would be so disappointed in me um, I can already see like the groups of tourists because this is typically where they tend to start them at some point so what I'm about to show you ideally if you're cool you'll come at like 5 in the morning when this is lit up and it's got a nice eerie yet somber feel to it I know I sell it well or you come later at night sort of like if you want to get a different perspective of the um, of the, the old town area you go when it's all died down in the early morning hours and it's really it's really it's rather cool actually especially for my fellow introverts who don't like people. Oh my God, where are we? We're underneath the street. All right. It's funny, the men's room is locked up, women's room is open. But here's what I wanted to show you. This, was, this is kind of the fitting conclusion to today's tour. This square right here, It's Podgorsky Square, right here, okay? And here's a monument to the Jews that lost their lives that were rounded up right here. And uh, this square has a bunch of little restaurants and you can even get a touch of Hebrew I think the cafe is right across the way. We'll look at it momentarily. This actually was my bus stop. <laughs> so this is how I know it so well. But, oh, and on a side note, we'll talk about this structure right here. But right over here, this best market, if you are looking for like Ukrainian food, like candy and palmini, because you love palmini just like I do, this is where you go, right here. <laughs> but uh, this structure here, that's now a ice cream place. Can I show you? So between June of 1942 to March of 1943, thousands of Jews were transported from the Krakow ghetto to their death to the concentration camp known as Belzic. I think it's Belzic. That's how you pronounce it. And again, that's why all these chairs are here to represent that. And if I remember right, and I could be wrong, but the story I created is, is that they would round them up in groups in there and then they would send them off. But I don't know about that for certain. That was a story I created <laughs> last year when I got here. But, uh, If you're looking for traditional Polish Polish cuisine, this is a good spot for it, I guess. And uh, the river and all the fun stuff, more fun stuff, is just that way. So this is what I wanted to show you. So see, here's here's a coffee shop. 
which I have a friend who probably would go to. Oh, it's in Hebrew. Coffee to go right here. But uh, yeah, so this, again, here's the square. Very important one, and then you can get across into Kajimiris and all that fun stuff. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna roll and go get some water. So, uh, I'll see you again. Until next time, peace.